Oh, on that note, it's really unrelated to ammunition, but I did want to admit a lie, a cheat, a cheat that I had done in our oh, last great. story arc. We got cheaters here. Um, my character can change shape, but he cannot change his height that drastically so as to become a gnome. So I was the tallest gnome farmer mm-hmm. ever. Thought Brutus. you should know. Brutus the Brutus forest gnome. The forest gnome. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm a gnome. <laughs> when you're tall, you have a deeper voice. I think his, I think his parents adopted him, but didn't want to tell him. <laughs> it's just an elf. <laughs> just gave him a hat. I'm like, you fit in now. Bardic Mystery Tour is a 5th edition D&D actual play about a rock and roll band who solves mysteries while they're on tour. I'm Ed, and I'll be your DM. Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm playing a super chill fear bulg. He's finally able to use his Ma's old shield with the family labyrinth carved into its front. He's a lore bard and the bass player for the band Dark Lancer, and is pretty bad with names. Hey there, I'm Nora, and I'm playing the lore bard, Windy Snowy Mountains. Windy's an experienced traveler and performer who's also a snow leopard to boxy. She likes playing her ukulele around a campfire, and her cat-like curiosity makes her ask a lot of questions. Windy's also praying to the cat lord for a rockin' show at Dream Lancer's next stop. Hello, I'm Brayden, and I'll be playing Staff again today. Staff is a changeling guitar player in the band Dream Lancer, but his bandmates have yet to discover his true identity. Staff often parades around in the form of Roger Stewart, but we'll see what other personas show up this session. Last time on Bardic Mystery Tour, the gang wandered into the stage of the most anticipated battle between mages, Mage Bowl 16. In a stroke of luck, they landed the halftime gig, if there is a halftime gig. We join them as they search for a room for the night in the city of Consville. This is Bardic Mystery Tour. We make our way to the wild boar. So you walk up the street and you see two signs next to each other. One says the wild boar, B-O-O-R. And one says the wild boar, B-O-R-E. Which one's the in and which one's the out? Do you get it? Explain it to the listeners. Yeah, we get it, but the listeners... Some of them They're are confused. dumb. Yeah, in is a preposition as well as oh, a noun. Oh, are you explaining Brayton's joke? I thought if I explained Brayton's joke, then he would have to explain my joke. Oh, okay, Brayton. Well, one is for drilling holes, and one is if you're a boorish person. So you're telling me that, like, the so there place are two where ends. we sleep has, like, full of holes. So that there are two ins that have the same, that are homophones. Are they both inns, or is one of them an inn and one of them a tavern? Let's go in the the boar with an E. All right, you go into the wild boar, and you realize after entering that both of the doors went into the same room. It's just really long, and the one side is like a countertop for an inn, and the other is a tavern that has a bunch of tables for eating and drinking and a counter for ordering food. Were the doors Wild West style? Saloon doors? No. Dang. They were 82 inch tall, 32 inch wide, uh, single glass pane, uh, hinged swinging doors. What, well, how many other descriptors do we need? That's good. Actually, Is there a push bar on each side because they swing both no, ways? No, there's a door knob. The door knob on a glass door? No, it's, it's right in the middle glass of pane the glass. For like, Face height. I thought you meant the whole door was a single glass pane. No. Okay. I mean, there's a single glass pane window in each door. Are there reinforcements? It only goes down to, like, above the doorknob. Are there reinforcement wires through the glass? No. Careful with that Seems dangerous for a place called Boar. Well, the one for the inn that's boring doesn't have wires in the glass. Okay. Also, I bet destroying glass is way less of a deal in a world where, like, mending exists. Oh, yeah. All right, we go to the desk. All right, we follow the bass player up to the counter. All right, you go to the counter. Behind the counter is a person checking you in. Hey, man. How's it going? All right, how are you? Good, I hate my job. Oh, Sorry to hear that. That stinks. Or at least I have a job. I guess. But really, all I want to do is play mage ball. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I get that. You going to that game like later? Or you have to work. Oh, I'll go to the game. We're looking for a place to stay for the night. You got any empty rooms? Uh, we got one left because we're all pretty much booked up from. You only have one room. We only have one room. Makes sense. I mean, it is a pretty busy time for them right now. You know, you're lucky we have one. We were sold out this morning. We had one cancellation. Uh, who was supposed to stay there? The crooked uh, gnomes. It's a privacy violation to tell you the name of our customers. You can trust us. We're very trustworthy. We're not from Consville. No, I just don't want to get fired. Well, we'll take that room. Okay. I guess we're all sleeping together tonight, guys. Uh, Do you have any earplugs? No. Oh, do you have any sleep apnea machines? No. I mean, somebody can sleep in the wagon if they want to with red. I was going to say they're called CPAP machines. I was like, maybe there's more than one sleep apnea machine. It's not called a CPAP. It's called CPAP for short, because sleep apnea. Yeah. There's also a BiPAP. See, boom. All right, all right, all right. We go upstairs to the room. All right, you go to the room. Yeah, we go to the room. All right, it's a room. Hey, do we have all our stuff, or is it all in the wagon? It's all in the wagon. All right, cool. This is a nice room. Let's go get our stuff. All right. We go get our stuff. Why don't we just go pay Red to bring our stuff to the room? He's supposed to be painting the wagon. All right. We head back to where the wagon is parked so that we can see the progress. All right. You go back to the garage? Yes. All right. You see that guard there? He's like, yeah, I talked to Shield. She said uh, you guys are fine and that you could use the garage. So uh, I'm just going to leave it there the whole time. Great. Perfect. Thanks. All right. We got to get our stuff out of there to check into our hotel room. Okay. Let me go to the wagon. All right, you go to the wagon. How many reds do we see? You're going to roll to see how many? Red's not there. Son of a... That kid. There... Wait, maybe he's went to get some paint. Yeah, let's Is check out paint the paint there? job. How's it looking? There's no paint there right now. Well, we're going to leave the wagon here anyway, so let's just wait and see what happens. At the at the worst, all we lost was two copper. How many and Magars is that? They're copper Magars. Megars come in different denominations. So it shouldn't say CP on here. It should say CM. Yeah. What do you What do you guys want to do now? Just take our stuff back to the room? Yeah, let's get our stuff in the room. And hey, I think it's time to have a serious discussion about something. <laughs> Whoa. We there, don't buddy. get paid if the show doesn't happen, even though we tried specifically to get that in the contract. And that dude, whose name we don't know, but the handsome, the really handsome dude... Uh, because he doesn't have all his hair, and dudes without all their hair are more handsome, actually. He said that the teams were missing, so maybe we should try to stack the tables in our favor and help track down the teams and make sure that the game happens. I mean, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, that sounds uh, reasonable, man. Like, we could hire a private investigator... For a fraction of the amount of money we're going to get paid. That sounds expensive. Yeah, we could just do it let's ourselves. Just, let's just do it. We've been investigating. You've been, like, sick. But, like, we've, we've investigated. Yeah, we, yeah. We've we're not this. investigators, though. Like, wouldn't you want a professional? No, I think we're good. All right. Well, how about this? I'll carry this stuff back to the inn. And you guys start looking around for an investigator or for clues. And I'll meet you guys back here. My mom always said, why hire somebody to do something when they can do it adequately whenever you can do it less adequately? I think that is an old tabaxi adage. I've heard it before. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Let's go see what we can dig up. Why pay to do something right when you could not pay and still just kind of do it? All right. uh, Let's go kind of do it then, man. All right. All right. Which of these bags do you guys need me to put in the room? All of them. I hand well, him I three. I hand them. him three bags. Okay. I hand him my bag, but it's like big. It's got to fit all my underwear. All right. I guess I'm just carrying a stack of boxes <laughs> that's taller than me up the street precariously with things hanging off my back. Back just to the end. Just take the cart over to the end. I can't take the cart to the end. Then Red won't be able to paint it. I'm gonna go and check on the horse, Valerie, real quick while we're near our wagon. Okay. How's our horse doing? Pretty good. I run back out. I'm like, hey, hey, Raj. Yeah. Yeah, let me get that bag real quick. <laughs> no, I got it. No, I got to take something out of it. Uh, <laughs> so then you have to like put everything down so that I, I get guess mine. So. <laughs> and I get some snacks out for the horse. And I'm like, all right, here you go, man. Why are we taking the horse snacks to the inn? You don't need a horse snacks. <laughs> we can leave them in the wagon. No, I we need just need to sometimes. change your clothes. You never like- wake up in the middle of the night and you're hungry, man. Uh, all right. Help me get this stuff back on. 
All right, I do. All right, I go to the inn. I imagine the Fearborg has like um, you know, the like green army, like yeah, but huge. It's like hanging on my shoulder, but also rubbing on the ground. What are those called? Duffel bags? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I go back and I give the horse a snicky snack. But is it also called a duffel bag if it's like a gym bag kind of shape? Yeah, but that's little. That's a gym bag. Like a gym duffel bag? No, just a gym bag. What does duffel mean? I don't know. I also don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Ed's taking us on a trip. Talk about duffel bags. I would like to go to Shield's office. Are you coming with me? Oh, for sure. Okay, if we All go right. to Shield's office, is she still there? Yeah, she's in there. I want to try to persuade her to tell me more about this situation with the teams and like point us to where we can find the dude in the purple suit. Roll a persuasion check. Would you like me to help you persuade? Yes. Wait, that's not how helping works. If you say you're helping someone do a task, you, they you just give them a bonus. Oh, I was no, saying like I was going to yeah, do it. she's just going to persuade Because like I was hearing her stumble over all her yeah. words with that number she rolled. Yeah. My, I got an eight. I got a 26. Hey, man, how's the directoring going? Good. Cool, cool. Uh, the pyrotechnic dude showed up. Sick. The light dude showed up. Good. We got to look good on stage, so yeah. The stage hands are building all the stuff. Nice, 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 nice. How about the uh, teams? They ready to go? They're warming up? That doesn't really fall under uh, event production. That really falls under uh, sport organization. Yeah, where's that uh, Where's that office? I've heard some people call it Sporg. I've heard that, but I disagree with that term. Where's that office? We got to make sure we talk to the team and pep them up a little, you know? We got like some pre-game music for them. You're looking for Burl Redwater's office. He's right up the hallway from here. Redwood? Redwater. All right. Um, well... You know, let us know if you need anything. We're staying up at that inn that's, like, past the place where you get the armor. And, like, I got some armor. It's not done yet. You know, sometimes it takes time for quality work. Okay, thanks for, uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, I am busy, so I'm going to get back to that. Right on, right thanks, on. Thanks, Shiel. We'll get out of your hair. But if I need you for any reason, I'm sure I'll find you. We wander down the hallway and look for Borough Redwater's office. All right. There's a couple of offices in this hallway, but you find one that says Burl Redwater, sport organizer on it. We knock. So this broad-shouldered man who is balding on top and wearing a purple suit answers the door. And he's like, uh, can I help you? Hey, man. Uh, this is, this is my friend. I'm Wendy. Uh, we're in that band that's playing later in the halftime. Uh, oh, I thought they didn't show up. I thought that, uh. No, no, no. Dark, Dark Lancer, we're. Or that band, you know, oh. is that the right dream, dream Lancer, dark guy. Lancer. Okay. We replaced the other band. So we'll be playing in their stead. Cool. Yeah, they, like, I'll bet she was happy about that. Oh That's yeah. One fewer thing she has to deal with. Listen, we, I think this is a little bit of an awkward topic, but we were next to Mert whenever you guys went over to talk to him and we happened to overhear that the teams might be missing. Oh no no no! Uh, nope, all the, everything's good with the game. The game's proceeding as normal. Perfect. Everything's fine. Well, where are the teams right now then? Uh, everything's everything's good. Every, they're oh. in their locker rooms probably, or maybe in their tour buses. Oh, let's go to the locker room then. Let's go check it out together. We've got some pep music to like pep them up before, you know, get them well, ready. I, I mean, you know, they probably do their own, you know, pre. You don't want to disturb the teams, you know, uh, you know. I don't know. No. Well, if you know anything about Mage Ball, what you got to know is that when the team's got to get in the zone, they got to feel it. And they don't have time to be talking to fans before the game. After the game is for the fans, you know. But you've, if you want the good Mage Ball, you got to let them, you know, prepare. They got their rituals and stuff, you know. You don't want to. Plus, I, I understand you guys are in the band that's playing, but like that doesn't mean you don't have all access to the Coliseum. You don't just wander around. You got to be invited by the team to get into their locker room. They got their own security and stuff. You know, you don't want just strangers in your locker room touching your stuff, you know? Well, Burrow, I just want to level with you. We don't get paid unless the game happens. So we're like, we're a little worried based on what we heard. Oh, well, don't worry. Can you tell me more? Everything's fine. I'd like to persuade him to tell me. All right, roll a persuasion check. 18. All right, you talk to him for a while, and he's like, "All right, listen, I got, I do have my back up against the wall. I don't know what I'm going to do here." Take a step forward, man. 
Take no, a come deep, into my office. Take a come deep in. breath. I can't be saying this out loud. Get in here. All right. We close the door. He's like, here's the problem. I stand at the door with my arms folded. So, like, I look real tough, like the bodyguard, so no one comes in. He's like, the team showed up. Everything was good to go. But now Pearl can't find her team. We have no idea what happened. Who, who's Pearl? Pearl. Brill? Pearl. Who is Pearl? Pearl is the manager of the warlords. They have strict orders to stay like in and around the Coliseum or near the tour bus or let someone know before they go, but just they're gone. All of them. What about the reagents? What? The alchemists? They're not. No, that was last. That was Mage Bowl 15. No, the regents. Oh, the regents. Oh, yeah. I haven't checked on them in a while. I hope they're not missing. They Everything should be normal on that front. All right. All right. And where are the teams staying? While they're in town. Uh, there's actually, like, some dorms in the Coliseum for, like, teams that they stay here and stuff. They're oh. connected to the locker room. That are connected to the grounds of the stadium. We should have put that in a rider. We're pretty good at, like, searching out details and figuring stuff out, though. So, we could, if you could let us, like, show us around of the missing team's locker room and dormitories and we could check yeah, it out. Us, give us a couple pointers on where to start and we can probably find them for you. Well, that would be an awful lot of help to me, but I wonder how much their like team security would, would care about that. That's not really... Are they not missing? The team security is still here, but the team's missing. Yeah. I want to tell you something. Only the players are missing. If your security team loses a team, I would think they're not you know, considered Look, I, good. I don't hire them. That's up to the team. So maybe they're looking for a new security team. So it could be us, you know? The security team might have been the one that got rid of them in the first place. Maybe we should check them out. Are you at all concerned that the team might be dead? That would be terrible. I know. Then we'd probably have to figure out something. Maybe I'd actually have to take up Bentini's offer to use that mechanical team. A mechanical team? Yeah, she's always trying to get us to try them out and run the real players against these safer alternatives. A supposedly. mechanical team could never be as good as real players at Mage Ball. That's what I said. Number one, they can't cast magic. Yeah, that's boring. Plus, think of all the rules situations you have to have that would deal with all that finagling between, like, what are automations allowed to do, you know? I Who's feel, yeah. this person in charge of the robot? I'm sorry. Bentini. Where is he around? She runs a factory. They run a factory? Like, in town? Yeah, it's like, right, it's kind of behind the Coliseum a little bit. Okay. There's a handful of workers from the town that work there. How long has she been trying to get you to use her mechanical? She's been running, like, uh, show matches and stuff with them, but, like, no one's that interested in it, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have the same attachment you have to, like, a... Real flesh and blood player? You get your name on a jersey? No one wants a, you know, a number on their jersey. Except for the number for their player. Not the number for a robot. It's really convoluted. Do their numbers of their team's position match their numbers of the who they are as a machine? I know. They're serial numbers. They should, right? But, but uh, hear me out. What about all the decommissioned ones, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although... When someone retires a number, you know. Who's the manager of that other team? The Corn Warlords? Cor oh, no, sorry, the Regents? Cornelius. Cornelius. Cora Vetus. Corn Cornitis. 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 That's that what I wrote. An Listen, Burrow, I got one question to leave you with. Burrow. Burrow. This B U R L. Can you tell us why the city's called Consville? Oh, it's named after Daniel Kahn, one of the founding explorers of the area. Has nothing to do with running cons. No, no, that only has one end in it. All right, all right. This land used to be much more wooded and, you know, less inhabitable except for, you know, the fey folk. Once uh, they did a little exploring, got rid of some of the evil spirits and stuff, you know, like came in here, cleared out some trees, killed all the giant spiders, you know, made a safe civilization, built up a town here. Did we convince him to go show us the team quarters? Yeah. You convinced him to tell you about it. Oh, let me convince him. Do we to use? Take a, do us. we roll another persuasion check? I'll persuade him. I'll persuade him to take us there so that the security guard lets off. I can tell you where it is, but, like, their security is their own thing. That's kind of their... They have to have a little bit of autonomy yeah, over but, us because we can't just... 
You're probably the kind of person that they trust because you run the whole shebang here, you know? Yeah, but honestly, the less it's my problem, the less I have to deal with. All right. Tell us how to get there. It's down the hallway. Which way? That way. All right. We go the way he points, I guess. Are you going to be here all day? Like, you're working until the show's over? Yeah, I got to find this team. I got the cops on it. I got a private detective on it. Whoa. All right. What's the detective's name? There's some other band that came in town. They told me that they like to solve mysteries, and we told them if they solve the mystery, we'll give them the spot for the... Uh, halftime show, so... Why does this stupid band keep following us around? Lucky thing, we got a fucking contract. That's all I'm saying. If the thing happens, we get paid. That's what the contract says. All right. Oh, and it said we had to play one second, so we might have to storm the field and play a second. <laughs> we have to fight our way through the security guards just so we can play. Don't let them touch their instruments. Turn off the microphones. All right, we'll head down there. We'll come back and get you if we find anything out. Thanks. Appreciate it. We go down the hallway. I close the door gingerly behind me. All right, staff. Yes. What are you doing? You head back to the hotel room. I go back to the hotel room. I drop all the stuff off. I put on, what is that called? A blazer, a jacket. And then I change my form so that I have curly black hair, no facial hair, human, male, middle-aged, very clean and tidy. So I might have to spend some minutes cleaning off shoes and stuff so i look really really tidy and then i head back towards the wagon but as i'm going i am going to look pretty nervous i want to take some rags some clean rags are there any in the hotel somewhere Mm, i don't know i'm gonna go to the front desk okay is there somebody there yeah i look very nervous can i help you uh yes um do we need a room? I start putting things in order on the desk that are a little bit askew. And I say, do you have any clean white rags? Sure. They give you like a rag. It's kind of clean. I do not touch it. If it's kind of clean, I don't take it. And I say, oh, I'm so, uh, 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 never mind. And then I go to the door and I open it with my elbows. And I go out in the street to try to find... Some other source for rags and then go to where the wagon is to meet up with my bandmates. But tell them that I've hired a private invest. I was hired by somebody and I'm a private investigator now. Where are you going to get rags? I don't know. I'm really worried about it. I didn't think that through when I was doing this character preparation. (laughs) Yeah, good luck because like, um, this is a medieval town. Does bleach exist? With like tailgating. Ugh. Why do you need rags? So I don't touch dirty things. Oh, okay. Can't you just use the same rag? Like it gets dirty when you use it. Okay. You said you wanted rags, but I don't know where you're going to find rags. What are the shops on the street that I walk past? A rag shop. Secondhand clothing store. Yep. Secondhand clothing store. Okay. I'll go in there and I try to find clean linens. Does that mean like sheets? Oh, clean linen rags. Or does that mean like underwear? I mean, linen is a fabric. That many different things are made yeah, but out so of. So when you say linens, do you, I think it's do you sheets, specifically mean like every big. single thing made out of linen? Mm-mm. You want to ask someone if they have rags? Yeah, but when I ask people things, I just go stand near them and then I look uncomfortable until they address me. Um, all right, there's a person at the counter. I walk close to the counter. Uh, I have my arms tucked in against my body and I look uncomfortable. Uh, they look at you for a second and then they. Leave the behind the counter. I um, make no noise, but I look like I'm going to say something. And I hold my finger up, and then I just look deflated whenever they walk away. Okay. I look behind the counter. Are there rags? No. Is there anything that looks like clean clothing? I mean, there's a bunch of bins with, like, piles of clothes in them. But and they like, all look dirty. There's, like, uh, a bar with a bunch of hangers on it. Mm. Okay. Uh, is there, like, a... I, I leave... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there like a um like a first aid tent? First aid tent. Uh there's a dentist's office. I go in there. Okay. Um there are bloody rags hanging on that thing uh, that spins. I cringe away from them. And I walk sideways, kind of shimmying around that space. When I say around it, I mean say it's twelve feet away from me. I still act as though it's gonna touch me. And I shimmy around it. 
Okay. And then I go up to the receptionist. and go I in. There's not a receptionist. You walk into the dentist's office? Yes. All right. There's a chair. And then there's this guy sitting there and he's got like a uh, the headband with a reflector on it. And he's like wiping off his hands. Uh, he's got like blood on his hands and he just has like this rag and he uh, takes the rag he wiped his bloody hands on and tucks it into his belt. What you doing there, good sir? You need a, you need a tooth pulled? You need some, uh, need some ointments? You need some, uh, need some liquor? Was there a sign on the front? Yeah, it just said dentist. It didn't have a name? It said Dennis the dentist. Uh, yeah, there's somebody outside asking for Dennis. There was, the, I don't know, is that you? The, the police are trying to talk to you outside. So what? Yeah, I, I they they said um that they need just to ask you a couple questions. Oh, tell I guess them to come in here. Heard from the thing. Well, I can't. Act. What thing? The um Mage Bowl what? sixteen. Okay. Why do they? Why do they want me? I they, I don't know. They just said grab Dennis and tell him to come out here. All right. Well, go tell them I'm busy and they need to come in here. I look real uncomfortable. Can I have some rags? Some clean rags. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure. He walks over to there's like a pile of a couple rags. Is he about to grab them with yeah. his dirty hands? I stop. I, I'm like, oh, please, oh, stop, please don't. I, I'll, I, I'll grab them. I can get them. He just grabs the top one and throws it at you. Oh, I let it fall on the ground and I dodge it. I can pay you for them. How much? I, and then I go and I just, I try to pick up a big stack of them. He's like, whoa, I need those for my business. I put one back. He's like, well, I was going to say you could just have them, but if you're taking that many, then you better give me some money for them. Uh, okay, how much? They're really just rags. So, like, I copper. <laughs> All right, I give him a copper. Okay. And then I say, thank you so much. He pats you on the back. Oh, I, I arch my back, and I make that noise, and I wriggle, and I say, uh, uh, have, a, have a nice day. He's like, if you need any leeching, let me know. Okay, okay, uh, thanks. And then I leave, and I go to the wagon. You go to the garage where the wagon is, and there's a guard there. I walk past him. He goes, excuse me, sir. He reaches out to grab you. I stop and arch back away from his hand. And I say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm an investigator that was hired to come see Shiel. Uh, I'll have to send someone to find out. We need to. It's uh, really no problem. I can find my way. No, I'll get someone to check it out. Okay. He just continues to stand between you and the door. He's like, I have to wait for someone to show up. And I just stand there and wait. Okay, so you guys head down to the uh, locker room? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Together. Okay. You walk down the hallway and you get to a T. And there's a sign. And one way says Consville Convicts or whatever they were called. And then there's another sign that says Away Team. Are there any paper signs that are printed out that show the actual names of the teams that are playing in the Mage Ball? I guess that would make sense. Sure, underneath the Consville, there's a piece of paper that says Regents. And underneath the away team, it says Warlords. Oh, yeah. It could just be that we can just see the top half of the word Consville, and then there's a paper that says Buckminster Regents. You know what I mean? Then it doesn't matter if you can remember what their name was, you know? Yeah. All right. We want to head towards the away team, big guy. Okay. So that's the missing one. That's good that you're paying attention. Good job. All right. Friend. So we go right. I didn't say which one was which way, and right is the one that goes toward the regions. All right, well, we take the one that goes towards the warlords. All right, you turn down the hallway, and you walk a very short distance, and then there is a doorway that looks like it's wide enough for a lot of people to go through at the same time, and there's a guard standing there who's wearing red and silver, but carrying a halberd. And talking to this guard is a tall woman who has a very large ring on her hand that she rubs nervously. Or like, I don't know, like, like, uh, it's not nervously. Actively. And she's talking to this guard in a quiet tone. I would like to see if I can overhear them. All right, roll a perception Same. check. 22. 23. All right. You hear her say, if we can't find them, we're sure in trouble. Also, it sucks if they die, because that's bad. So maybe she says something like, I'm really worried about the team. I hope that investigator comes back with something. And then she sees you and she goes, what are you guys doing here? Hey, uh, we're here on behalf of that, uh, what's his name, man? Burl. Burl. We're on behalf, on his behalf. Helping to find a team. Who's he telling about the team? Well... That's none of your business. We're the band. 
playing the show. That doesn't seem excessively relevant. We're experienced investigators, ma'am. We've oh, solved yeah? many crimes before. How many? We've solved many mysteries before, and the number is not relevant. So, uh, yeah, I want to persuade her to let us in the locker room. So I'm like, should I roll for that? Sure. I'm going to back her up. 26. 15. All right, what are you seeing? To- I'm like, okay, so we're here to check out the locker rooms, the showers, whatever other rooms there are that the team was in because we're going to look for clues and then hopefully that will help us figure out what to do next to find a team because let's face it everybody wants to see the game yeah we forgot to mention we're also huge mage ball fans major so but the locker rooms and the showers are like their own like private stuff like i don't even go through their stuff you can come with us while we just kind of check it out we're not trying to like yeah, we're not going to take anything. Yeah. You're probably looking for souvenirs. No, that's why you can come. We're just looking for things that are... All right, well, we already looked around, and there are no clues in there, but if you think you can find some clues... Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Good luck. Since you guys are such excellent sleuths. Yeah. You won't need to come with us, or are we good? Sleuths. The guard and I are both coming with you. The gardener. The... Get it? The guard and her. Hey guys, it's Ed, your favorite DM. Just wanted to say thanks for listening to Bardic Mystery Tour. We really love all you guys, and thank you for listening. Thanks for downloading all of our songs on bandcamp.com, which you can go and find them. Or if you need any information for us, always you can check us out on our website, bardicmysterytour.com. Also like us on, you know, your favorite social media platform. We're on all the ones that we think are relevant enough, so you can probably find us. Don't worry about it. Uh, I wanted to take this time to plug everyone's local gaming store. Remember, during this pandemic, to support your local businesses the best you can. If you guys are living somewhere where the stores are still open, just wear a mask and go, you know, support your local gaming stores. Buy some dice, buy some D&D books. Uh, if you're in Pittsburgh, our local gaming stores are the Geekadrome on Brookline Boulevard, where we record, and uh, Drawbridge Games over in Castle Shannon is also awesome. We love them, too. But uh, there's gaming stores all over Pittsburgh, so wherever you live, check out your local gaming store. All right. Back to the action. All right. We enter the locker rooms. Does it smell? It smells like sweaty gym socks, and there are lockers everywhere do we immediately see anything laying out oh there's some stuff there's like towels and uh maybe like a mage ball sitting there what about the one of the skulls yeah there's a bag of skulls i don't want to make it too much of a divergence but are the skulls all like human skulls like people's skulls no it's a sporting skull it's a specific shape so like clearly as either of these two could explain to you if they needed to uh, it used to be played in the olden times with real human skulls, mm-hmm. but since then we have progressed and we use a uh, synthetic skull. It's less sharp and it stays in one piece and it's less likely to break from like hard impact. Still hollow. Still kind of skull shaped, kind of skull weighted, but like it almost doesn't even really resemble a skull. It almost doesn't even really That's resemble. That's not true. Well, we know who's right here and it's Emily. They're also, like, more uniform in weight, you know? A person to person, like, Emily's and my skull might be drastically different. We might have weird lumps. Mine might, might weigh more. But they look real. And if you want to pay more, you can get some with, like, teeth are fancified. Gold teeth. Yeah. Or camouflage Platinum plated. Platinum teeth. Okay. Your favorite team logo. All right, cool. Yeah, they're all branded at this point, like. I just wanted to know if there was, like, a farm of people who are just raised for their skulls. I would like to investigate. All right, roll an investigation check. It's going hot over here. Five. Thirteen. All right, this uh, teenager comes in and he goes, Hey there, Pearl, have you seen uh, Sheil? She wasn't in her office, but there's apparently someone outside looking for her. Pearl's like, I mean, who you assume is Pearl at this point? Says, no, last I saw her, she was up... uh, Maybe did you check in Burl's office? And uh, he's like, oh, uh, maybe I'll go check up there. I'd say, why don't you look for her in her office? Well, 
Everyone that was paying attention knows I said that I looked there first. Never mind then. Oh, so don't look there now? Change your mind? Yeah. I really want to put a a cast to detect magic, but like, it's a, I think it's a once a day ability. And I know we're going to find magic stuff in a mage ball locker room, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good guess, I think. Doesn't seem worth it. So, how did your 13 or whatever go? I don't, don't know. I'm waiting oh, here. Sorry. Well, you didn't find any brooms, I'll tell you that. Well, yeah. But you found a pair of tennis shoes with oil on the bottom. Did you show it to me? Do we know if oil on tennis shoes is like a normal part of mage ball? I mean, you usually play on a dirt field. They'd be dirty, not oily. Hey, big guy, I found these shoes that are all oily on the bottom. Where did you find them? In a locker. In whose locker? It wasn't labeled? Whose locker was it? I don't know. Jam? Jam Dolomites? I heard of him. Dolomite? Oh, yeah. He's a favorite. He's a, he's one of the only dwarves in the entire league. Dwarves don't tend to take up to the magic or the sports as much. Is he a rock? So no. He's interesting. He's a dwarf. A rock dwarf. Isn't Dolomite a rock? I think so. So where do we think they could have gotten oil on their shoes? Uh, what about that factory? Oh, that's true with the mechanical. Do we want to look for any more clues? Wasn't there another room? There's a locker room, and then there's also... The other locker room? It also goes out in... There's a lot of rooms in the Coliseum. I don't want you to be confused into believing that there's, like, three rooms available in this Coliseum. I just thought you said that there were two, like, team rooms, as in, like... Yeah, yeah. The regents got two rooms, and then the warlocks got two rooms. No, I said there was like a locker room, and I said there were showers, and I said oh, there maybe was that's like, what I was they have like uh, dormitories. Oh, maybe we should go check out that guy's his dorm. dorm. Yeah, I think we should probably check out the other locker room and see if we can talk to the other team. See if anybody's yeah, suspicious. All right, uh, pearls. Like, what you guys are done or what? You came up empty-handed, also. Well, we found a clue. We're going to go talk to the other team what and clue see is what it? we can because find out. Because you should share all of your information with us so we can do a better job of investigating as a unit. Well, as my mom used to say, one clue does not make a picnic. A wise, wise woman. So we don't want to share a clue with you and have you jump to the wrong conclusion. But I shared all of this with you. That was part of like the implication. All of what? Access you were allowed. Rooms? Yeah, exactly. All right, we got a question for you. Can you show us this, uh, and I point over my shoulder at Jam's locker. Can you show us this guy's dorm? Found something suspicious. I want to just check it out. Um, I think the dorms are basically off limits. There's, I don't, I don't know how much information is going to be up there. Unless you have a good reason to go check it. Doesn't sound like you do. Did we find both of those shoes? Or just one? Or we found both of them and one of them had oil? I think they were both had oil on them. Hey, Wendy, let's go follow this clue first, and we'll take these guys with us. Okay. Sounds good. All right. We'll let you in on what we found. We found these shoes, and they have oil on them, so we're going to go check out. Yeah, but that's not very suspicious. Why? It's just oil. What color oil? Like black oil. See? That's like... Mechanical oil, like that robot team. You think they were kidnapped by robots? Yeah, that's our working theory. And you think the other team is actually robots? No. Why do you want to question the other team? They might have seen something. Yeah, what happens with this team if the game doesn't happen? Do they automatically win, or do they just, shucks, it's over? Probably gets rescheduled, because, like, you know, the league probably would rather have the event. But I don't know. Maybe they forfeit. Like, if you can't make it to a match, forfeit, right? I think I would know based on the fact that I'm, like, the manager. Um, I have a clarifying question about Mage Ball. The team managers, I think, are both women. Coronitas and Prill. Coronitas is not. But you didn't meet them. Okay. Are all the players, like, is it just men? No. Is it just women? No. Is it a mix? Yeah. Is it a mix of races? Yeah. Okay. Again, you tend to see fewer dwarves because they're not super into magic very much. Some of them are into the physical side of it. Depending, I mean, plus you know, some mate, some dwarves are into magic. Uh, you tend to see fewer of like some of the smaller races, like halflings and gnomes, because like they have trouble competing on the physical side of it. They don't Even though gnomes are super good at magic, 
So sometimes you get gnomes because they're have they're so strong in magic. And like you don't have to be physical in the sport. There's many ways to play it. So like you get all kinds of people in it. You can also you, it's possible to play mage ball without any magic at all. It's just difficult. Some teams have gotten to like semi decent fame without having any spellcasters on their team at all. But there have also been a handful of teams that have gotten some pretty good notoriety having like one or two players that don't use any magic and one or two players that like aren't physical at all. So like, you know. There's many ways to build a team, but when physicality can be important and magic uh, aptitude can be important, uh, someone who has both of those is more desirable than someone who has one of them. You know what I mean? You'd rather have a mage that can run and jump and throw balls than a mage that can't or someone who can that isn't a mage. Pick it up on a button down. It's like when you play hockey, you want like speed and dexterity. Yeah, yeah. I think we, I think we got it. Yeah. Do you want to go again though? I can keep. I'll say this like as many times as you want. All right. Uh, so I say to the lady, okay, okay, okay. You're right. Maybe we're just off base here. Thanks for showing us around. If we think of something, we might be back. Okay. And I go to leave. All Good right, luck. I follow. Okay. Thanks. You too. Once we're out of earshot, I'm like, you want to go to the check out this factory? I feel a little bad because I feel like we just left Raj. Like he went to go put our stuff away in the hotel room and like we just like booked it. Do you think we should go check on him? Okay. So you do every time. Maybe we could take a nap when we get to the hotel. So I guess we're going to go back to the inn and check and see if we can find Raj there. All right. You go outside and there's that guy that came in and talked to Pearl and he's talking to that guard that was watching the garage. And he's like, yeah, I can't find Sheila anywhere. So uh, I don't know. I guess uh, I have to wait. And there's this other dude standing next to the guard that has curly hair and a jacket on and a entire armload of rags. Oh, I wanted to see if I could tuck those away, because I think it's more comically effective. Oh, while you're waiting out. for the... Uh, yeah. Put those in, like, every pocket you have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And well, I think that when they come out, I'm counting things. Like, the chain links in the guard's uh, chain tunic, maybe. You think he has a chain tunic? He's also counting rocks on the ground that he's not touching. Uh... Should we go look in the room? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Let's go head back to the tavern and... Okay, you guys are going back to the tavern? Yeah. Do All I right. see them? Yeah. I want to stop them. I want to... Oh, hey, uh, uh, excuse, excuse me. Uh, hello there. Uh, dream Lancer? Uh, we're two-thirds of Dream Lancer, yeah. What's up, man? Oh, I'm a... Uh, h- hello, and I hold my hand out to shake their hands. That seems wild. I shake it. I flash the, the three-fingered peace sign, and I'm like, what's up, man? Hi, my name's Adrian, and I'm a private investigator, and then as soon as I'm done shaking their hands, and I pull out a rag, and I wipe my hand off and throw it on the floor. I was hired to help with this investigation, Wait, and... you throw it on the floor? But, yeah. Like, this is the dirt ground? So you're fine with making a mess on the floor? Yeah. Have you even watched that show? No, like, once or twice. Not really. I remember being conflicted and being like, why? He's making a mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has different compulsions. Um, so anyway, I, I'm looking to help solve the, this case. So I thought maybe I could tag along with you guys for a little bit because you seem to have the inside access. Oh, are you working with Shield? Yes. Well, I'm working, I'm a private contractor and I'm working, I'm helping the police department. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we found a clue in the locker room. We're trying to trace it down. We think it might be associated with the factory. Yeah. So we were going to go out there and see what we could see. But first, we're going to go check out on our friend in the uh, tavern. Okay. Sounds sounds good. If you don't mind me tagging along, uh, you drive. Okay. I pick up his rag off of the ground and I stuff it in my pocket. All right. You head we back go- to the inn? Yeah. What's it called? The angry boar? The wild boar. Wild boar. You head to the wild boar. Okay, we go inside. Do we see our friend Roger? No. The whole way there, At the we looked around counter? for yeah. Roger. I roll a perception check. 24. 10. 5. Did you roll a perception check to see if you could see yourself? You just said to roll. I, you know, I didn't know why. All right, no one sees Roger. All right, we head into the tavern. Okay. Should we go up to the room and check on him? Yep. All right, that's what we do. I go first. All right, you go to the room. I open the door. And there's no one in there. Is our stuff in there? Yeah. What's it look like? Uh, it's your stuff. Is anything open? No. Raj? Hey, Raj? I like look around our very small room. I look under the bed. Okay. Does he answer? No. All right. What do you think? Where do you think he is, man? 
Yeah, I think he just, he dropped the stuff off, and now he's probably looking for us. I don't know if we should, like, stop to try and find him, or just let him do his own investigating. What do you think? I mean, it's also possible that maybe on our way here, we didn't see him. Oh my god, what if he got abducted by the same people that abducted the team? Like, maybe that's just, like, a thing that's going on here. And then I turn to this, like, dude that I don't know very well, and I'm like, hey, man. Uh, yes. Well, now we've got a bigger problem, because there's, like, an abduction thing going on here, I think. Yeah, we're seeing a, we're seeing a pattern here. It's not just a team that's gone. It's also our friend. Oh, no. Well, we'll have to look into it. Let's go to the factory and see if we can find more clues. Yeah, factory. We go downstairs and I ask the bar person, Hey, man. Hey, what's up? Can you direct me to the factory around here somewhere? Uh, Bentini's Automation Factory? Yeah. Uh, It's like the big factory looking building that's like really tall and has huge windows in it that are like uh frosted or whatever. It's like hard to miss. They're like painted black windows. Do we know where that is? You've seen it. You, yeah. We thought that was it, but just wanted to make sure. Cool, cool. And I flash him like the three finger peace sign. It's got the big B A F on the front. All right, bye. With Thanks. the gear logo. Should we go there? And now? it's like red and white. Yeah, we go to it. All right, you go to the front, and there is a giant door, eight feet tall. What's it made of? Perfect. It's like one of those metal doors. It's on a track for like um an old freezer from like the thirties or whatever. Wait, what? Like hangar doors. Like a barn door. Oh. We can't go into this door thing again. <laughs> Is there a track on the ground that's toothed? Like you you turn a wheel and it moves it with toothed gears on the top and bottom of the door? Oh, that'd be sweet, but no. Son of a... In this world of D&D, are there cameras? And if so, do we have one? No. Okay. There um, are... I don't know. Let's see if there's like... I mean, there's like divination spells. All right. I'm like, hey, Wendy... Hey, what? And I stand in front of the door, and I point up, and I'm like, it's the right size. This is the best door I've ever seen. I love it. I always say whenever I find a door that I fit in, and it's a windy-sized door. So this is a big guy-sized door. Okay, and then we go in. All right. The door goes into, like, a smaller area that has, like, walls that it's walled off from the rest of the factory that it looked like this is basically one enormous room. But there's, like, a desk in there, and there's another huge door across the room. There is this dwarven lady sitting there, and she jumps up and she goes, How's it going? She has uh, a red beard and a nose ring in one of her nostrils. She has a red beard? Yes. What color do you think her beard should be? Purple. No, it's like a natural hair red color, not like fire truck red. Hello, my name is Wendy. How's it going? Welcome to Bentini's Automation Factory. Thank you so much. You guys looking for some automations? You guys like to make things in your life easier? We were hoping for a tour. We've heard so much about this factory, and we're visiting from out of town. Oh, yeah. For the Meach Bowl. So we figured we'd stop by and get a tour of the factory. All right. Can we take one today? Absolutely. All right. Let's go. All right. And she takes some papers off her desk and puts them in a drawer and closes it, and then goes to the big door in the back of the room and opens it up. And she's like, come on with me. I'm Bentini. Are the things on our desk in order? There's nothing on our desk anymore. That's what I'm talking about. That room just had a desk in it, apparently. <laughs> this is perfect. Let's go on the factory tour. All this right. be a good factory. You walk into the factory floor, and there's all these, like, half-built robotic machine-looking things. Some of them look like they maybe have, like, leather-fabricated human cradles for, like, sitting in to, like, manipulate the, uh things, or some of them look like they are, like, entirely autonomous mechanical machines. Yes, mechanical machines. They're these, like, six-inch tall, like a cube and, like, a sphere and a pyramid that have eyeballs on them and little arms and legs, and they run around and stuff like that. There are these conveyor belts that um, currently aren't in operation, but go to a bunch of different stations where it looks like people could chill and do things to a something that's running down the production line this factory is huge it goes like back and it's like packed all kinds of weird half-built machines and stuff that you've never seen before so bentini tell us about your um favorite automaton that you've created oh my favorite one 
I like them all. They're all special, you know? Sounds like a mom. These are quite impressive. Yeah. They all have many different tasks. Also, the place is a huge mess. There's, like, dirt everywhere. And there's, like, oil spills. There's, like, nuts and bolts littering the ground. One of those little robot things runs out and grabs, like, a nut and then runs it over and puts it in, like, a bin full of, like, nuts. But then there's another one that grabs a nut out of the bin of nuts and just, like, hucks it out into the floor somewhere. All right, I'm gonna wanna, I want to nudge that one away with my foot. Let the one who's putting them away put them away, but move that one so he can't reach in the bin. All right, well, you nudge it away, but it kind of just, like, steps back toward it and grabs another I, one out of the I bin. I nudge it again, and it's become a, an important task to me to keep it away from the bin. And I'm willing to become devious about it and, like, tip it on its side so it can't move correctly. Well, it can stand itself up. You tip it over and it stands itself back up and it runs to the far side of the jar try or bin. To, I try to tip it the other way. It also gets back up. Is there anything heavy around here that I might be able to pick up? Uh, Yeah, there's, like, bits of scrap stuff around. There's, like, a, maybe, like, a tire or something you can find. I, I want to use one of my rags and then pick up the tire and then tip it over and then lean the tire on top of it. See if it can, can't get back up. All right. It just like scratches at the ground a lot. And then I walk back over to the conversation. All right. She's like, so over here we have, uh, agricultural work helping appliances for, you know, tilling fields or stuff like that. This is a logging machine. There's this huge machine that looks like a person could probably sit in it and it has a bunch of levers in it and it has like a giant like buzzsaw. For an arm and an arm that's got like, you know, that tree grabber machine that's like two prongs and on one opposing prong. Yeah. yeah. I would like to investigate and see if I can see any place where there's oil that somebody could step in. Yeah, there are oil patches in the floor, oh. like intermittently. One of the conveyor belts has one of the casters or whatever, the wheels, what are those called? It's just like leaking oil. Bearing. Yeah, I was thinking bearing might be the right word. Mm. I asked her. I'm like, hey. Roller. I'm sorry. I'm like, hey, what are all these uh, conveyor belts for? Oh, that's for if uh, we get a large enough order. You know, we need to do production line style stuff where like one person can do one part of a job. Then the next person can do like just one part of the job. And so like being able to do like a single job that you're like used to doing is a little more uh, time economic than, you know, one person building a thing from the ground up all by themselves. I got you. Cool, cool. But also, you get more work out of a laborer if they change positions. So a lot of times what we'll do when we're doing a big job is we have a bunch of people come in and we'll all do task A for like the before lunch and then we'll have lunch and then we'll come back and we'll do a different task. Everyone will switch around. So a lot of my workers have like two things they're specialized in. It helps like uh, shift gears in your brain and like uh, keep productivity high and, uh, you know, also makes you feel like you're, uh, you know, it's not as monotonous and like brain killing. So I think it's a better work environment for my employees. Bentini, uh, are you a fan of Mage Ball? Oh, yeah. I love Mage Ball. Are you going to be going to see the game tonight? Yeah, absolutely. We're the band playing the halftime show. Dream oh, really? Lancer, yeah. Crooked Bones? No, Dream Lancer. Crooked Bones had to drop out. Crooked Bones had to drop out? Yeah, but don't worry. We're better than them. Oh, okay. I'll believe that one when I see it. Somebody told us that you're making automatons that can play mage ball. How does that work? They're kind of like these little guys that are running around, but they, you know, I program them with like goals in mind. They're like try to get the uh, ball through the hoop 20 feet off the ground. Would you mind showing us those units? Well, they're kind of stashed away. They're back in R&D and uh, visitors don't go in R&D. So do you think they'll ever be able to defeat real players? They've had mild success. They've beat like, uh, you know, like the high school team, but we have to put special rules in, you know, like right now we can't do like physical stuff. Cause like, if you know, one of my machines kills a person, that's bad, you know, but you know how mage ball is under a lot of criticism right now anyway, cause it's like, you know, full contact and the invisible servants. Well, they're trying to get the invisible servants in, but they keep on upholding that ban on invisible servant, which really holds back learned mages and Really benefits the natural casters a lot better, which I think is kind of a problem. If you think about it, if you're trying to encourage the uh, education route toward Mage Bell. But how is introducing automatons going to change the game? I mean, can you have a partial automaton team? Partial Maybe. human? I never even thought of that. You could put a mage in the automaton. Then it would be like they're stronger, but they could still cast magic. Because that's one of the problems with the automatons is they can't really cast magic. That's really smart. You're on to something. 
Might have to get working on that. Mm. Glad I could help. Do you have any investors? No. So you just finance this whole thing yourself, Bentini. That's impressive. Yeah, it's like a passion project for me. I uh, grew up playing mage ball. Never got into the magic side. It was just like, you know, tough enough to roll with the big guys, you know? Yeah. What position do you play? Usually spinner. That's my favorite. Yeah, I like it. It's less important to have more magic, I think, in the spinner position than it would be in, say, like the fronter or the swing. I have a question. As a person that's not up on automatons, really. Yeah. Um, You say you're not really into magic. How do these things work? I mean, some of them are magical. There's a little bit of magic involved. But a lot of it's all mechanical, and it's just, uh, these machines, like this logger here, no magic, just all dwarven science. Finely crafted materials. Um, do you hand out any tour souvenirs? Um. Just want to have something to commemorate our time here at the factory. We got postcards. Oh. Hey, uh, big guy, you hear that? Yeah. I don't know, what do you think? You think the fam would like a a factory postcard or like a... I think, mage ball. I think they probably want a mage, mage ball. ball one, you know, because yeah. we're playing that show. Some beer koozies. Oh, we should get some beer koozies yeah. for the cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to buy those. Three Are beer they free? koozies, please. We want them for free. They probably charge like a dollar for a koozie, and no one even knows what a dollar is. Dollar. Dollar. Nora doesn't get that joke. I'm writing down that I got a beer koozie on here. I thought you were going to say you were writing down you got that joke, and I was like, that's not fair. I want to try to see those mage ball automatons, but I don't know how to make that happen. So we might need to go find more clues and then come back to it. What was the oil like on the bottom of the shoes? Like, I don't know that you guys told me about that, but what was, what did that oil look like? Was it black oil? Was it black mechanical oil with metal flakes in it? Yes. Metal flakes in it. That's why it was uh, black. Engine oil is black. Oh yeah. I thought it was like soot. Oh, I, yeah, it's like metal. It's like pieces of the engine that are falling apart. Like microscopic ones. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Why is oil black when it's in the earth? Tweet at us. Because crude oil has oh, has okay. other stuff in it. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe How it is like... How close is oil straight from the earth to... Like, I'm not saying, like, you couldn't throw that in your engine. Because, like, we have, like, our engines are, like, precision engines and stuff at this point. But, like, was that good enough for, like... Oh, I'm trying to get this 15-tooth gear to, like, roll or whatever, you know? Yeah, I, don't, I think it's been processed since forever. Like, you think anyone's ever made a 15-tooth gear? Probably, yeah. I think that's, like, very few teeth. It's a weird... I just think it's weird that it's an odd number. Mm-hmm. That is odd. I don't know. Anyway. So, I think our tour is over. Yeah, I think we need to chase down other leads. Wait, first... Do I feel like I believe this person? Like, I don't know. I want to see my insight on her. 19. For what? Like, do I feel like she's hiding something in her place that she's not showing us? You feel like she's hiding everything in the R&D department. But that's all, like nothing else. What will also be nice to know for you guys is that farther down all the way on the other side of the factory, there are like two staircases on either side of the building that go to like a catwalk. Uh, it's not really a catwalk, it's just that there's like a room, like an upper room that's only on part of the building, and there's like a, you can walk in front down there, and there's a couple doors in uh, that wall up on top. But like the regular factory floor continues under that room. Does one there. of the doors say R&D? Yeah, there's a big R&D sign. One says R, and the other says D. One says R, one says and, one says D. There are three doors? Yes. There's four but doors. Not down. Hey, uh, do you have a bathroom here? No, there's just, uh, there's, like, bathrooms outside. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thanks. That's, like, public outhouses or something, I don't know. Um, and I, like, go to leave out the door, and when I get outside, do I see any people? Uh, you're leaving? She's like, all right, thanks for taking the tour, guys. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the koozies. Uh, bye. Come back when you want to buy a fleet of automation automatons. Have you been selling a lot of them? Yeah, we get contracts sometimes, you know. How much do they usually go for? Uh, you know, something big like that logger thing is probably like four or five thousand. But like, we make some of these, like these, like trinket ones are like, uh, people buy them like their pets. They're like 500 gold. Okay. So that contract with Mage Ball would be really big because they'd be buying a whole team worth. And as we all know, how many people are on a Mageball team? Five to seven. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> Five and seven. Because some of them play really well at defense. Twelve-ish, really but well sometimes they play Iron Man. So the five on defense are part of the seven on offense. Okay. I thought we said there were it's three and Iron five. Man. It's called Deathmatch. Death round. Round. Iron Man is when uh, the same people stay on the field the whole time. Oh. Uh, Wait, are you making this up? No, no. This is real. So In what sport? So they talk about a lot with football, where your offense and your defense are the same, like, 11 dudes. Same people. That's Iron Man. Oh, uh, cool. Can we move on? I'm sorry. That seems rude, but I just want to play D&D, and I don't like sports. Well, today we're doing sports and D&D. Uh, did you guys all get outside? Yeah, I think we're all outside. Okay. Uh, I followed you. I want to make sure no one's, like, around and he can hear us. I like that Brayton's question no one gave a shit about. Wait, what was Brayton's question? If this contract was worth a lot of money. Oh, did you answer it? No, I got yelled at for talking about sports. I'm sorry, Brayton. <laughs> I'm sorry. Where is the missing mage ball team? Is this part of a larger serial crime? And what is Mintini hiding in the R&D section of the factory? Find out next time on Bardic Mystery Tour. It's the Bardic Mystery Tour. There's only one thing we implore. Tell all your friends and they'll tell more. Warn your sheriff cause we're kicking in doors. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Bardic Mystery Tour is recorded at Looking for Group Pittsburgh. Looking for Group Pittsburgh is a land center in the Brookline neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you're in the area, stop by for games, co-working, or events. Find more information or schedule your next party at lfgpgh.com. Imagine you're just some, like, peasant. You're like, oh, man, my glass broken. This is horrible. But imagine you're, like, just a first-level mage. Even if the only thing... You didn't even make it all the way through, like, mage school, but what you did do is learn, like, mending. You're, like, the most useful person in the town. Like, hey, can you fix my window again? Yeah. All right, here's, like, four gold. Thanks. Four gold maybe is a lot for that, for a mending spell. How much do you think a pane of glass costs? Because if the mending spell costs more than the pane of glass, you would rather buy a new pane of glass. Well, if... Plus the labor. labor yeah. yeah. So...